Hi, we've had quite the memorable history together, and I can't wait to discuss your new public art initiative, which we'll be partnering to bring to Atlanta and Savannah. It's great to see you, Paula. These days, you must be doing a lot of business over Zoom. This is, I think, a really important um, archive of experience that's going to be very useful to you in the future and talk to as many people as you can gather your friends have a friday evening cocktail parties and talk about a specific subject right or show some of your own work but you use the time i think can in, in sort of inventive ways don't let it get by you because i think it's really important it is a visual diary and um documentation of your life at this time which it's yes. never happened before, so it's very important. It will affect all of us going and forward. hopefully and never will, right? Hopefully never will, yes. <laughs> You're always so thoughtful about your presentation of ideas. Would you like to speak to inequalities in the world, and how can we continue to work to change that? I was having a conversation with someone the other day, trying to decide if we should use the term inequality or inequity, you know, the sort of line of divide that make it absolutely impossible for the bottom half to really rise up. But very much, I think, sort of split along deep racial divides. But a part of the real divide that I think we have lost sight of are really the sort of deeper class issues. The average white person with a high school diploma will have a greater income, approximately 13 times more than the average black person with a college degree. Staggering. Staggering. That is inequity. <laughs> and that is inequity. One of the things that becomes then important is to understand the circumstances under which we live. Yes, of course, I care about race. I care about what happens to uh, my people. Um, but I also care about what happens to people. People. I care about what happens to us. We have to look at these systems of inequity that keep us apart. I mean, people care. Our students care. Our community at SCAD cares about not dividing people, but bringing people together. So Resist COVID Take Six, your new public-facing art initiative. Not only does it raise critical health awareness, but it shines a light on how this pandemic has disproportionately affected Black, Latino, and Native communities. I'm talking with um, my best friend at the beginning of the lockdown. We had a deep sense that the virus was going to have a deep impact on black and brown people specifically. I've worked on it every single day since March 2nd. It is always a labor of love, even when it's uh, a labor of, uh, of labor as well. I thought that you would be a great partner. Thank you for thinking of us. We've talked about the virus and the critical discourse on racial inequalities that 2020 has brought into focus. What is the larger role of art? during pivotal times. The thing about the arts is that it really does allow us to get closest to our humanity. There's always some tension in life to be sort of negotiated, but out of it, you know, has sprung these vast demonstrations around the country. Also musicians all around the country, artists all around the country, around the world are making art constantly about this moment, developing whole new ways for presenting material uh, to the world. And or we're using technologies and our computers and our phones in order to have sort of deep and meaningful conversation. You make every interaction so amazing. I always learn so much from you. And now I'd like to invite art history and museum studies senior and SCAD Museum of Art docent Tiva Beloy to lead our audience Q&A. Hi Tiva, please meet Carrie Mae Weems. Thank you President Wallace and thank you Carrie for being here today. What is something you used to believe about what it means to be an artist that you no longer believe? That I have to know what I'm doing. Sometimes you don't know what you're doing until much later. I can trust myself to make mistakes and the answers to my questions rarely happen actually when I'm in the studio. They usually happen when I've worked very, very hard and then I allow myself to relax. That's what I mean by getting out of the way of the work so that the work can do its work, right? So that the mind can 
do the work that it has to do. Especially regarding social justice, how do you think artwork can retain its integrity and purpose when exhibited and promoted? so as to avoid it being used as a performative tool. You can't always really worry about it. And I used to think that I could control all of these forces, but I can't. The only thing I can control, maybe, is me. But the response to the work at the end of the day is really up to the public. How you perceive it, understand it, and how you carry it forth is a thing that really uh, ultimately will matter. That push forward towards something that is deep and meaningful in our lives. That's our story, you know? So what will your story be? I can't wait to find out. <laughs> <laughs> that is all the time that we have, but we just wanted to thank you so much, Carrie. It means so much to all of us. Thank you. The brilliant, remarkable Carrie Mae Weems. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful <laughs> rest of the summer and good luck for the fall. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie.